showing you how to make beautiful comments with AI. On the episode 1, I had done this video on a Windows computer. Unfortunately, I noticed the videos weren't clear enough. So this henceforth would be what our video tutorials would be like. They would be better. If you prefer this quality, please do let me know on the comment section. So I'm going to proceed into logging in with my API key on this computer. Like I said, okay, bot practically goes beyond just the bot software. It's practically a mobile browser. So remember how I installed okay, bot on my Windows computer? I was able to create an activity, which was where we created a task um, to visit a YouTube video and make a very beautiful comment. Now, the moment I put in my API key again, you're going to see that that task would also be updated here. This is because every single thing is synced. The bots, the bot storage, the local cookies, all the browser sections. I can always have access to them whenever I put in my API key on any computer that has OKBot. So right now, I've been able to gain access to my OKBot account, which is through my API key. Before I proceed into launching those activities, I would want to go straight to creator mode. On creator mode, I would want to click on create task. On create task, I would want to load the executables and I would want to load the executable called, we we'll gave it a name. Yes, this was the name, Why? Oh, it's a YT. The name was YouTube comments, not YT. Now, if you recall from the previous video, this was what the executable looked like. And I also made emphasis on how GeekBot okay, practically just helps you put, uh, present, present lots of boxes to you. And then from these boxes, you can just fill in the details you would want to have automated. For instance, if I click on this edit over here, to edit what we did before, you can clearly see that this was exactly what we, we we had programmed before we had said it should visit this youtube video you should spend 15 to 30 seconds on that youtube video on the secondary actions we said it should click on an expert this was supposed to be the comment section you should type into that expert which is into the text area the comment box after which it should click on the um, comments so the comment gets posted on that youtube video now you saw us program this on episode one we're not able to run it so let's run it on episode two so firstly in order for we to make a comment on um youtube we have to be logged into youtube now if you're not logged into youtube then obviously you won't be able to make a comment so now we could do this by creating bots and when we create this bot we would now log into the youtube channels we would want to log into into this bot and then because the okay, bot saves the bot states the local storage this browser sessions and everything it simply means that okay bot would always be able to turn on those browsers that we have logged into before and then execute the task you know using their account or using their browser session now to make it make sense to you i'm going to head over to the menu once again and i'll click on create on mode now for the sake of newcomers people who have never used okay but before who probably just watched the first video that had to do with creating a task i would create a bot here and show you how easy it is so i'll click on the create bot when i click on create bot i'm being presented with a form like this now this form makes it very easy because the only thing you're supposed to do is to ask yourself very simple logic questions like how many bots would i want to create now this question it's being asked two ways firstly how many bots would i want to create in general secondly what are the number of bots would i want for each device so cakebot has divided devices into four major category we have divided it into iphone into android into mac os and into windows so let's say for instance we want to drive comments beautiful comment like we started on episode one which we have created an activity for we would want most of these comments to come from iphones and android in order to achieve this we would now decide how many bots we want in general 
in general i can say i want a total of seven bots now i want a total of seven what will be the ratio of iphone stroke android since i'm more focused on just mobile devices i can say i want about three iphones i think i think um i think i think i think i will do eight devices so i will just create four iphones and i'll create four android so i have an equal of you know um four iphones four android which is a total of eight devices next i'm supposed to give these devices i created what we call a bot name so a bot name basically is just basically a name to identify each bot this is because we're logging into any of these bots we want to know the bot we're logging into we want to log into bot one we want to log into bot two we wouldn't want to get things messed up but the way okekbot did it is we didn't give you an opportunity to just name one single bot as we assume this would be more for automations and you could use your normal browser to automate anything you want to automate with other softwares but okekbot is usually on a high scale so instead of having you give one bot a name we made it possible for you to give a group of bots just one name and each of that or each member of that group of bots we just have like an id so let's say for instance i want to do youtube comments i can do youtube i can do youtube underscore comments now what this means is that i've created or i want to create a family of bots and this family of bots will be called youtube comments now this doesn't mean that every single bot in this particular family will be called youtube comments like precisely but what it means is that they will have at least youtube comments in their name followed by an id now in order to make this make sense to you i would show you perfectly how this works so i'm going to give it a name youtube comment like i've already typed next i want to start deciding where precisely are these devices going to be located so when we often on our computers we're not being asked with what time zone we would want our device you know to be operating from if i turn on my google chrome my Google Chrome just uses the time on my computer. Now, why this is a very beautiful thing, it could also be an issue. For instance, I'm currently in Lagos, Nigeria. The time over now is 16 minutes past 5 a.m. So this is practically like early in the morning. And I could want to have lots of automation done from different browsers coming in from different locations all over the world. I want to automate comments coming in from UK. I want to automate views coming in from the US. I want to bring in lots of engagement coming in from the Australia. And I want to do all this on my work bot coming in from different location with my own computer. But, to your, uh, uh, but realistically, everybody thinks I'm coming in from Australia, from Canada, from US, while I'm practically here in Nigeria. In order for me to achieve this, I would need to be able to not rely on the time I have on my computer, but instead make sure that as every single device is using a process server, they should also have the time zone to match that process server. Now, I don't want to rush you. I see lots of comments most times that we sometimes over explain. This is because we want to make sure people understand exactly how to use OKBot. So as to appreciate the product and so as to get the best out of it. Leaving out important information might cost you damages. As most bot detection system, most platforms, if they notice the time on your computer, which is the device time, is completely different from your IP time, they would restrict it from certain services. As it is just evidently trying to say that, your IP address is coming in from a different location other than your device, that means you might be using a proxy. Now, most platforms don't frown at using proxy servers or VPN, but some other services, some websites, some places you might want to automate a task would frown when your IP address has a different time location 
than your browser that is executing this. This is to note that using a proxy server or a VPN doesn't automatically change your time. Now, most VPN in recent times are able to modify the time zone on your browser automatically without you having to do anything. But sometimes we get to use other VPN or other uh, softwares that do not change our time zone when they, you know, make requests. So this makes our computer give a different time from what our IP address is showing. Now this could be a problem. But on OKEG board, we already have the solution figured out. So now, while trying to create a device, I would have to ask myself, what time zone will this device be originating from? So now, this decision will be made with, would I be using this bot family with a prosy? If I'm going to be using this bot family with a prosy, and the prosy is coming in from Canada, Australia, Korea, whatever location, that means not only will I put in the process of our details to tunnel through that location, but I will also set the device location time zone to match with that. This way, whenever I automate taxes in the future, I would always have, you know, a seamless, non-detectable execution of my activities. If I don't properly set this and I set a wrong time zone, and the time zone maybe is different from the originating IP, then this simply means that I would have detection leaks. Now, simply because I'm not going to be using any process server on this, I would also not be trying to come from another location other than my current location. I would honestly and sincerely put in Africa, Lagos. And that's practically because my current internet connection is coming in from Lagos, Nigeria. My um, um, prosy is not being set, so that means I'm not tunneling through any prosy. And so it is wise for me to just put in my time zone as Africa stroke Lagos. Now, if you're from any location, the moment you start typing, you get auto suggestions. So if I was, let's say, from um, somewhere in the Europe, Amsterdam, I can put in Europe. The moment I put in Europe, you can see all the Europe time zone. If I was trying to set this device time in America, you can see right here, these are America time zone. If I had decided as well to do this from some other location, you would also see their time zones. But since I'm currently in Africa, you can see lots of time zones in Africa, for Accra, Bijam and the rest. But I'll head over to Africa stroke Lagos which is the correct time zone of my device. I'll click on start build. Now this will take some time, but then this will completely start creating devices for me. Now at this particular point in time, you can see it's saying here, personality saved, personality saved. Now what this simply means is that every single one of these bots I created has had its information saved on OKEGBOT. At this point in time, we can shut down and start up a new episode where we would show you how to execute these activities. What we did right here is creating bots and we created this bot to have a time zone of Lagos, Nigeria. We didn't put a proxy for it, so we're assuming it would use the current time on the current um, um, IP on our computer. We gave it a name called YouTube underscore comments. We created for iPhone and we created for Android. On the next video, we're going to start logging into each and every single one of these devices. After logging into the devices, we're going to move into automating tax or giving them a tax to have them executed all by themselves. See you on episode three.